All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. This is the six liter you saw me pull out of the dumpster. Uh, it doesn't spin, it doesn't win. Today we're gonna figure out why. I suspect that that's why. That's rusty water that came out of it when I turned it upside down. And I don't know what, this is dirt. Ew. That can be bad news bears, we'll see. Um, I have an entire 5.3 here to rob parts from if I need to. So, you know, we'll see. But I'm going to put you guys on a time lapse because I don't want to turn off my music and pull the heads. I suspect there's water in a cylinder, but it could be worse. Doesn't really matter. I know the crank is good because it'll turn through like 350 degrees of rotation. So if that's the case, I have a 5.3 right there with a bad crank. So that'll get that crank, Gen 4 rods and pistons. One way or another, I have everything I need here to make this happen. So I'm gonna crank the tunes back up, get to work, put you guys on time lapse, and I'll let you know what I find. So there's gonna be a couple time lapses in here. I mean, I'd, I'd love to show you everything, but like, do you really have time to watch me walk around for 10 minutes looking for a 13 millimeter socket? So I really didn't know what to expect going into this. A lot of people said bent valve, bent rod. I checked the bottom end for a bent rod, didn't find one. Um, at this point I was wondering if maybe, <clears throat> I wasn't really sure, you know, maybe there was a bent valve, maybe there was a, a piston rusted to a cylinder, um, just kind of hard to say, so, you never know until you tear it apart, I will reiterate again though, I 100% don't recommend anybody do this, just buy a complete one, just buy a complete engine, but we'll be back. All right, so it looks like it was just too difficult to overcome how shitty the cylinders were because <laughs> I pulled half the rods um, and now it spins really easy. And there's nothing wrong with these bearings. Uh, they look fine. There's nothing wrong with these rods. They look straight. Um, so I'm gonna pull the other four and I'm gonna clean up a little bit up here and tomorrow I'll bring you guys back and we'll uh, do the full driveway rebuild, which is gonna consist of, uh, I think I have a ball home from when I did my Mercedes. It's probably not four inch bore though. Um, I don't know, unless the other four pistons hold some mystery that is yet to be discovered, uh, looks like old Virgil's gonna get a six liter. So, uh, I'll bring you guys back tomorrow. It's getting dark, I'm tired, wet. Peanut's tired of standing around, but uh, we'll be back. So the pistons are out, and if you look close, the ringlands are just packed full of carbon and mud and shit. Um, so I'm just gonna spray some degreaser on them, uh, let it sit for a few minutes, and power wash them off. The bores, hold on for, for a minute, see if I can get you down there. You can see at the bottom, they're also caked up with carbon and stuff. Um, I have a ball home from when I did my Mercedes. It's not the, it's not a four inch bore. So I just put it in there cockeyed and ran it around a little bit to knock the shit off. Um, this thing's going back together today, as is, where is. So uh, I'll put you on a time lapse again and show you power washing the pistons and wire wheeling the deck and putting it back together.
All right, so we're halfway there. I don't know, maybe you noticed, maybe you haven't, but my engine stand has two bolts in it. Um, I really need to pull the hoist back up here and pick it up so I can figure out how to get a third bolt in it. Um, I've been putting it off and trying to rush, but I kind of need to take care of that now. So uh, I'm gonna pause the, pause the time lapse here, and but you see what I did. Gently wire wheel. I, I know what the comments are gonna be. This guy's an idiot. You're an idiot if you grind on your deck surface, right? Like I just wire wheeled the carbon out mostly. Um, and we'll go from there. I would like, I'm not going to be able to. I have eight hours. I have to pick all that crap up. I have to get rid of this. I have to get rid of that. I have to get rid of that. Um, I have eight hours of daylight left. So, uh, not gonna happen today getting this running. Um, mainly because I don't have a pickup O-ring, which is the one thing that I'm gonna change. Uh, I don't have any oil. What else? But yeah, um, you can see that that O-ring is flat and not curved. Like, it should be like an inner tube or donut. So, uh, it spins fine like when it's not the cranks or the flex plates dragging but it spins fine now um so yeah i'm gonna pull the engine stand back up here get this thing picked up all right so we've run into the first fly in the ointment here in this build um see how on this second ring I can move it around. Your rings should be able to move pretty freely, um, which was the point of degreasing them. Let's see how I can just work them around. It's also why lining up the gaps is not all that critical because they spin in the bores. So I don't know why people say that, but people say that. Um, but anyway, this one can move. That one couldn't move and I tried to pry it out carefully because you can stick the end in it and you know work it loose um clean the land out and it didn't work out it broke so i'm gonna check see what ebay wants for a cheap set of rings um not set one piston's worth and i'm going to replace just that ring unfortunately this is a six liter so these rings won't work because they're for a smaller bore um so yeah I, I wouldn't have, if I found a bent rod, I wouldn't have bought a rod and piston on eBay, but I, I might do this if it's like 15 bucks or less. Um, and I'll order my O-ring at the same time. And I'm gonna pop this one in and we'll have a seven cylinder LS for now. All right, we're ready to button up this bottom end. Um, show you real quick, if I can find my ratchet. I can't find my ratchet. Here it is right where I left it um, she spins super easy now not left-handed though all right there we go there's my little three dots there's my little three dots There's my little three dots. So, the only thing keeping that locked up was the sheer amount of bullshit on the pistons. Um, the one thing that I do to every single engine that's gonna get, whether it likes it or not, is that O-ring. Nothing else. Not cam bearings, not main bearings, not rod bearings, not anything that's easy enough while I'm at it. Just that O-ring nothing else not new gaskets not new bolts not over here not over there not in a box not with a fox like these head gaskets and these bolts are going right back in that engine the only thing i do is this oil pump o-ring fun fact back in the day if you didn't want to use that paper style you wanted extra compression or whatever you could get what they called a steel shim, which was basically a single piece of steel. 
and it would be like I don't know 30 thou 28 thou thick and you would seal it with the spray which is what this spray is intended for so this is at this point a fully assembled long block um, to reuse your bolts you just blow the holes out really well it's important that you blow the holes out really well got to have a clean hole like your mama always told you what if you get hit by a car and go to the hospital um, and then you use the same torch specs 90 degrees twice on the big ones this particular LQ4 has short bolts at the end. That's a thing they quit doing in like 03, I think. Um, so I had to grab those out. But if you have an LM7 or a later model, they're all the same. Just put your bolts in and go. The rockers, you just drop them on, send them to 22 inch pounds. Or, you know, I give them a quarter turn, whatever. I rotate the engine like more than one time so it's in a different spot and I tighten them all again. And that's not in the procedure, but that's what I do. I never have any LS tick, knock, rattle, any of that shit. So uh, that pretty much brings you up to speed on the long block. The next video will be installing the factory harness, removing the vats, and wiring it to run in the vehicle. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on The Driveway Engineer.